this way on this uh, feast day of St. Teresa of Calcutta, we call upon her and all of the heavenly hosts who have led the way in evangelization through their witness to the gospel, that our uh, episodes here, our podcast, and all the work we do here at St. Anne's may uh, lead people to encounter the risen Jesus and help them to fall more in love with God who is love. We lift all this in the intercession of Our Lady, Queen of our hearts, and Queen of this podcast as we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm Father Dominic. I'm Bowman Eric. And this is Ed Talks, where we hope to inspire saints who inspire saints to build the kingdom of God. Amen. So... We've introduced the podcast. Valerie had make, made sure I remembered. To, Is she pointing at you? <laughs> we should do that. Oh, okay. Well, she might have. Oh, wait, we didn't do the clicky. Oh. Oh. So, the sixth graders. This know, are our wonderful sixth graders. Our incredible sixth graders here at St. Edward's School. Blue Ribbon School. Yes. Week one submitted... 7,326 questions. It was a lot of questions. <laughs> it was not seven. It was a whole list of them. They're good questions. They are good. What? We're, we're going to answer one of them. So the, uh, Cuz you already went and answered it for them. I answered it perfectly. And of course you did. Yeah, it was You know what you're talking about. That's why you're on this podcast. We don't <laughs> bring people who don't know what they're talking about on this podcast. Uh, that's all right. I, I did I did my best. I took a crack at it, and um, so now we can take a crack at it together. It's the first question, the ultimate question. How do we show our love for God? That is a big question, it's huge. which I feel like there's a lot of answers to. There are, too, yeah. yeah. And I'm happy and excited to hear your answer. Just the great answers that the kids gave were just simple things but those simple things are oftentimes the hardest things to consistently do because they're so simple and they're so obvious. Like, do I worship God? Do I go to Mass? Do I pray? Mm -hmm. Do I treat my neighbor as I want to be treating myself? Like, that's pretty much it right there. That's, that's, that's the sum total of it um, in, in a very short answer. I'm, I'm glad you ended with that one. I'm sure we'll talk more about it as we go through. But when I was around their age, like... I'd say junior high, even into high school. I think one of the the quotes of Jesus that always stuck out to me was, whatever you do to the least of these brothers of mine, you do to me. And I remember, I have a, one distinct memory. I might have been in high school. I, was, I had to be in high school. I was driving. And I had to go to Walgreens to pick something up for my mom. And there was a guy sitting outside the Walgreens with a cup asking for money. And I saw him going in, and my immediate, my first thought was, like, total judgment and thinking he's some, like, druggy or alcoholic or whatever. And, um, and then as I was, like, in the store, that gospel quote just came right to my mind, and I was like, ah, oh, crap. Uh, I just called <laughs> Jesus an alcoholic. <laughs> and I, like, I, I spent the whole time in Walgreens thinking about that, and then I did with the change, whatever change I got, I, I gave to the guy. I thought you said, then you walked out, you, you looked away and walked past him. <laughs> well, I did that on the way in. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, but <laughs> you, you, you changed. You changed. It changed me, yeah, I did. And, and that just kind of always stuck with me. Um, so yeah, how we treat others, it's, there's a lot to, to, that, to that very big question. Um, but I, you know, how we treat our neighbor as well, is I think it's something that still resonates with me, especially the poor. How do we show our love for God? I said, okay, as, as the lover of Thomas Aquinas and scholasticism that I am, the, the overrated uh, doctor, the, uh, we got to define our terms, right? Mm -hmm. Aristotle would say the same thing. You can't just jump into this question, how do we show our love for God? And so we, we dove into it, like we and love and God, right? These are the three terms, the big loaded terms. The show part, the verb, that's what we were just talking about. Like, like that's the, the crux of it. But before we can get into that, the answer, the verb, we got to figure out who we are, what does love mean, and who God is. So, as we were talking before the show, Father Dom, and dear listener, all of these questions, so many of these questions are answered way more articulately, persuasively, and powerfully by our church. No way. Right here, in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. In fact, in fact, if you open 
this book up, and, and I know, this is crazy. The Desire for God, 27. So if you don't know how the catechism works, dear listener, it, it basically breaks it down by paragraph. And by the time you Lots love, of paragraph numbers. you love, at the end of each little section, mm -hmm. there's a cool thing called? In Brief. In Brief. And, and there in it is, brief. In Brief. And it actually gets its own little paragraph numbers, too. So it kind of is a summary. So it tells you what... Um, so if you don't want to read all the other pages, you can just go to the In Brief. <laughs> you can't, but you're going to miss some beautiful things. You language. will miss some beautiful things. And like, so this is cool. This is cool. The In Brief is like the cliff notes of... Catechism. Yeah, it's like what we Good believe. Thing. The desire for God is written in the human heart because, and here we go, man is created by God, by God, and for God. And I love this line. And God never ceases to draw man to himself. Only in God will he find the truth and happiness he never stops searching for. So that, that idea, and then you, you move forward, um, that idea of who are we. God created man, this is from paragraph 355, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created him, that's of course, Genesis. Man occupies a unique place in creation. He is in the image of God. In his own nature, that's our nature, we as humans, in our own nature, we unite the spiritual and the material worlds, which is awesome. And then I love this part four. God established him in his friendship. Mm -hmm. So this idea that we are made to be friends with God. We are made to be in relationship with God. So we are a creature, but we're the only creature that's made specifically for the purpose of being in relationship with God. And relationship and love, that's that second term, requires choice. Mm -hmm. And so we got now it's up to us. Like we can we can be in a relationship or we can not be in a relationship, but it's not like you can't be a robot. Because you can't have a relationship with a robot. I don't know, I didn't watch the Will Smith movie. Did he, he have a relationship? Was there like a Will Smith robot movie? A long time. A creature that God created that was meant to be in relationship with him. Everything else that we have in our beloved planet was made for other reasons, mainly to help humans. Um, but it, it was, we are the only ones created to be in relationship with him, right? God, and, and we see this in the scriptures. God did not seek a relationship with any of the trees he created or any of the animals he created. He didn't look to the elephants or the dogs or the giraffes and, and say, you know, in my image you have been created. No, he only said that to humans. They are good. All of those things. Of course things, they're good. Even, God made them. Even the good. gross things that we are horrified by, like rats that are... Uh, they're only I... gross because we see them as gross. Right. They're and... not gross in and of them. Right, they, they so. do exactly what they're meant to do. Yes, and, and rats the, eat your garbage. So uh, the, that's that, right, That's the flip side of, oh, they do more, th oh, that's not, <laughs> go there. This is a, this we is don't a, talk about your rap This problem. is a show, it's gotten better. Yes, it has. Praise God, <laughs> praise God. So animals and, and plants no. and rocks and all of those things, they are good. Of course they are they're good. good. We, the flip side to the coin, is that we're the only creature that can do not good things. Like, we're, because we choose to not, we choose against the Because it is our choice. It's right? our choice. Animals act on instinct, they're not freely choosing. Right. There's, yeah. a, there's some. That's, enough, that's a, a, another distinction. A big distinction, yeah. right? Like, one of the main ones. And so, because of that power, it's, it's Spider Man with great power comes great responsibility. Ooh, yes. Who is that? Uncle Ben? Is that his? Oh, Peter Parker's... It's not Cliff! <laughs> Cliff, <laughs> Peter Joe. Parker does not have an Uncle Cliff. Uh. Anyway, <laughs> well, he knows who he is. Uh, so, so, but that, it's true though, right? So that, yeah. and that is this, this relationship that God is calling us, not only calling us to do, to, to participate in, but it's what he designed us for is this Amen. relationship. But it's got to be a choice, it's got to be our choice. And so then, who is God on the flip side? So who is God, Father Down? God is love. God is love. God is love. He is the creator. Mm -hmm. And he holds us in his love. He loves us so much that he created us because to exist is a gift. Because we can't will it ourselves. We can't choose existence. It's a gift we're given. And loving is to will the good of the other as other. It's another great way we, we know the Trinity is who the Trinity is, right? So God existing outside of space and time if God is love, God has to be in relationship 
constantly. So the Trinity, well, that doesn't necessarily mean there's three persons, but what helps us to understand who the Trinity is and that it's a relationship of persons, because love, in, it, it necessarily implies there is an other to love, right? Self-love is a contradiction that so makes no sense. To love is to, to always look to an other. And that's, that's something we talk about, right? So love. And I love that because it, it is so intertwined with God. God is love. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means God is relationship. Mm -hmm. right? and he's the Father loving the Son, the Holy Spirit, and that kind of beautiful poetic understanding of who the Holy Spirit is, is, is love personified, that perfect love personified. So it's this, this kind, of, kind of permanent back and forth of love. Yes. Um, and it's, you know, incomprehensible in many ways. In, in Human language is incapable of capturing perfectly what this is, mm -hmm. but we can see love and we understand this metaphysical reality of love. We, we know it. And even in how we also understand love more, I guess, as humans and even the non-religious, you know, love is always creating, right? So love creates friendships, love create, builds bridges, love brings people together, love literally between a husband and wife creates a family. So love is always building and creating and growing, whereas anything that's evil or bad, it destroys, right? So that's, you know, one of the, the attributes of God is that he's omnibenevolent, he's, he's all good. Uh, there can't be anything less than good in God because God doesn't destroy anything. God can't be evil. He can't be bad. Um, those things destroy where love only creates and builds. So we've talked about who God is. We've talked about who we are. And you mentioned briefly about what love is. And you said, why don't you say that again? Love is to will the good of the other as other. So it's not that I'm willing your good because you're my employee or because you're my friend or I love my parents because they're my parents or my spouse because they're my spouse. And there's no condition to love. I love, to love is to will the good of the other only because they are other. Love is an act of the will. It's a choice. Yeah. And this is the love that we're talking about. I mean, obviously, with, with, when humans, especially in English, in English, we talk about love. We've got lots of different, there are different types of love. But the love we're talking about is the divine sense of love. Agape. And, and agape. And that, we do, we get to touch the divine by participating in, in this kind of love, this self-giving, self-sacrificing love. And of course, it's most perfectly personified on the cross. Mm -hmm. How do we show it? Let's go back to what those sixth graders, the first thing they said. Yeah. They said, go to Mass. Amen. What does that mean? Why? Why? Why, why go to Mass? Some people will be like, I can, I can pray at my house, which... I can. I can do that. Why, why, why do I got to go to Mass? So what did you tell those little sixth graders? I said, ask Father Dom. <laughs> 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 you're, you're the pastor. I mean, <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I'm just, no, I, I, <laughs> well, it goes all the way back. Not all the way, because you just said it not two minutes ago. But the cross, right? The cross is perfect love. Um, and the cross is perfect love for a number of reasons. One, it's a self sacrifice for others, right? So Jesus even tells us in the scriptures, there's no greater love than to lay down your life for a friend. Jesus was not dying for himself, right? Uh, Jesus is God. He doesn't have to prove it to anybody. But Jesus died for our sins. He, he did that for our sake so that we could one day rise from the dead with him as he, would have, as he did rise three days after dying. So in the Mass, in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, we go back to Calvary. This is so cool. And, and so it's, not, cool. it's not a representation of what happened. We're not acting it out, but spiritually, um, outside of our own space and time, we are brought back to the actual sacrifice of Christ on Calvary. Within the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, we are in the upper room on Holy Thursday, hearing Jesus take bread and wine and make it his body and blood for the very first time. We are also simultaneously on Calvary on Good Friday, watching him die uh, on the cross and simultaneously at the empty tomb on Easter Sunday, knowing he has risen from the dead. So, so cool. all of those, that entire Paschal mystery is present every time we celebrate the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. So cool. Like we are pulled through God's grace, through his power, through his, through his ordained ministers, we are pulled outside of our normal temporal life and into that ever-present 
ultimate act of love, which is the Paschal mystery. And to be there to worship God as he's doing these things for us again and again and again, that's our way of saying, Lord, I love you, I am here with you, right? Because even at, at Calvary, the, the, the apostles were gone. It was just John and the Blessed Mother Mary and, Magdalene. and Mary Magdalene um, and, and Mary, the Mary the wife of Clopas. <laughs> Uh, All these Marys. Clopuses. <laughs> Father Mac, uh, well, we'll talk about that later. Um, so the other disciples and apostles, they, they fled in fear, right? And so we are now showing God we love you, and we want to be here with you, witnessing this great divine act of love, so that as we participate in it, hopefully we will go out, we'll leave the church um, after a Sunday Mass, and go do this in our own way, to you, Jesus, and other people in our neighbor. Let me give a shout out to, I want to say Nora. If it wasn't Nora, I'm giving you the shout out, Nora. But she our said, sixth grader Nora. Sixth grader Nora. Oh, sixth grader Nora. And she said, when I said, well, why do we go? And she said, the Eucharist. Amen. And it's awesome because there is God in a truly and uniquely present way in the Eucharist. But the other cool thing is that when you read about sacrifice, in, in the kind of Hebraic understanding of sacrifice, there's a sacrifice, but then to participate in the sacrifice, the sacrificial animal is consumed. Mm -hmm. And that is the consummation and the participation in that sacrifice. And Christ is that sacrificial lamb, and we literally consume him because he wants us to participate and to consummate that sacrifice that is life-giving in the eternal sense of the word. It's really cool. Uh, it's, it's awesome. And it, it, you, you look back and, and you say, oh, that's why God was so insistent with the Jewish people. This is how you do it. You sacrifice, then you eat the sacrifice animal through the priest. It's like, oh, he was laying the groundwork for what he's going to ask us to do to save us. Yep. It's beautiful. So anyway, so that, that, was, that was cool. So that was... Um, Worshiping God, because we're made to worship God. We are, and there is, and you know, back to the Mass, there's no more perfect prayer in our entire tradition than the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. There's no more perfect prayer. That is the best prayer, period, because of everything that, that it entails, all the spiritual mysteries that are involved, and especially the, the climax, the, um, the source and summit of our faith, the Eucharist and, and consuming our Lord in the Eucharist. That's how many years? This is year one of three years. Is that called for the Eucharistic renewal? The Eucharistic revival. Revival. This is, is it, year one of three. Is it revival or renewal? Revival. Revival. All right, folks. Like a revival. We're part of a revival. Year one of three. We'll have to have a separate podcast on the Eucharistic revival. Oh, it's going to be great because I'm I, writing it down. That's how important. I it is. think we're we're kind of going to dive into that a little bit deeper. In our next podcast. next podcast. Our next podcast. Loving our neighbor. As I saw Father Dom is checking the time. <laughs> I can't see it. 21 minutes. <laughs> we're almost there. We're all, no, yeah, we're almost there. So let's give a little teaser. We do a little teaser. Love the neighbor. Yeah, so what does that mean? Um, to will the good of the other as other. Right, so that means, and, and who is our neighbor? Everyone. Even that one neighbor? Even that one, even the one that makes your teeth itch. Even the one that at my block party was playing music with giant f bombs in it, and I was like, "Please turn that down," and they got they were offended. They are also your neighbor. Gosh darn it! Both in the <laughs> literal <laughs> sense that they're your neighbor on your block, yeah. but they're also the neighbor you're called to love. Yeah, maybe they're listening, and now I'm called to love the neighbors that emailed me mean things <laughs> when they're unhappy about stuff. Was me. <laughs> was me. <laughs> I, no. <laughs> but it's true. It's like every single human being, from the tiniest human being to the yep. oldest, to the, from the nicest to the meanest, they are our neighbors. They and are called, our neighbors. And it is hard. Yes, it <laughs> is. It's not easy. Yes, to, it is. To but win. we have some great saints who showed us how to love our neighbor. Some of them we will talk about in our next podcast when we talk about Catholic activism. Stay tuned. Um, but, you know, Jesus is uh, the prime model par excellence of loving neighbor. The cross, that's perfect love. You don't get 
more perfect love than that. The cross is what every marriage should look like. The cross is what every priestly ministry and, and religious life should look like. Um, and what, what does he say from the cross? As we are killing him, he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they... Like, that's love. That I mean, when you, love. when you are being killed, murdered, you are divine and you aren't being murdered. You're, you're literally there to save these people and they're killing you. And you're saying, they don't understand. Forgive them. I love them. That's, that's divine. Yep, yeah, it is. One of my favorite saints was able to do the same thing, St. Maria Goretti. As oh. her attacker was attempting to rape her and as he did murder her, uh, her the last words out of her mouth were forgiving her attacker. Oh, At 13 years old. She's a powerful saint. You know, that's... The saints that they show us. So we're going to look at one definite canonized saint and three almost saints on our next podcast. Three almost that, saints, people. Well, three almost canonized, I should say. I think all three of them are definitely in heaven. <laughs> but the church hasn't pronounced it yet. So, That's um, why you said you think. At our next, our next podcast. So stay tuned. Keep podcast. Subscribe to us on Apple and Spotify and Google and wherever else you're listening to us. <laughs> Uh, subscribe to us, like us, share us, and help us to spread the good news. Amen. I'm Father Dominic. I'm Paul Maneric. And this is Ed Talks, where we hope to inspire saints who will inspire saints to build the kingdom of God.